People love it when I get mad. It's not my nature, but what the heck, I'm gonna get mad for you, all right? The reason I'm mad today is because people love to cherry pick portions of studies just to push their agenda. Okay, in this case, their anti-keto agenda, right? Okay, here's the thing. This study that I'm gonna talk about makes a mention that mice get obese when they do keto long-term. Whoa, you can imagine that people had a heyday with that. They took that little section and they said, guess what? If you do keto long-term, you're gonna be obese. So we're gonna cover this study. We're gonna talk about the mice model and why doing studies on mice doesn't really, really, truly apply tit for tat when it comes down to keto. Then we're gonna talk about the definition of short-term versus long-term with this study. Then we're gonna talk about what this study was actually about because spoiler alert, this study was pro-keto. It was a good study, a great study. There's just some issues with it, and it's not the study itself, it's the people cherry picking what they wanna pick from it. So anyhow, this study did find secondarily that mice would get fat if they did keto long term. Does this mean that we should stop doing keto altogether because we might get fat? Well, here's another news flash for you. If you eat 10,000 calories a day, even on keto, you will get fat. Anyhow, that's not what the study was even about. The study was about something called gamma delta T cells, which is an immune system function, anti-inflammatory process in the visceral fat, which we'll touch on a little bit later, but that's scientific stuff and I don't wanna lose you on this video. I wanna keep it simple. Make sure you do hit that red subscribe button and make sure you hit that bell icon. We've got daily videos coming out. I'm not always mad. And also a uh, big thank you to Eugenio Matcha. If you drink matcha tea, if you're into matcha, this is the cream of the crop, 180 year old Japanese matcha company hands down the highest quality matcha that is out there. So I put a link down below for anyone to get a special discount if you are a subscriber or you like to watch my videos. It's just my way and Yushido's way of saying thank you for subscribing to this channel and being a part of it. Now let's get mad again. Let's first touch on the problematic uh, issues when we do mouse model studies, especially on the ketogenic diet. Let me first say, I reference a lot of mouse studies, okay? They are very applicable, they work, but it all depends on the whole situation. In this particular case, we have to remember, mice did not evolve to eat a ketogenic diet, whereas humans actually did. Okay, humans have large brains which can run on ketones. Mice have little funny little mouse brains, okay? I don't see humans choose, actually I do. I was gonna say I don't see cho humans choosing to run on a wheel, but <laughs> we do run on treadmills, so I don't know, maybe our brains are small. Anyhow, the point is, is that mice are running predominantly on glucose. They eat little bits of seeds, they eat little bits of grass and little bits of grains. Okay, here's the thing, they're not designed to be ketogenic. So that brings us to case two. Okay, with this study, they had to get the mice to eat a 0.1% carbohydrate diet. That is pretty much zero carb. Okay, that's pretty aggressive and not realistic for most of the people doing a ketogenic diet. Separate note, I will say that if you are not getting some gut diversity, some bacteria, some different prebiotic fibers now and then, you probably are doing yourself a disservice and you might have issues later on down the line with inflammation. But that's neither here nor there. The third and the biggest thing that we need to be paying attention to is that it is a well-known research phenomenon that mice will eat to obesity on a ketogenic diet. If you put food in front of a mouse it will eat it, okay? If I were to lock a human in a container and force them to eat 20,000 calories of coconut oil and they didn't get fat, that person would be an absolute freakazoid. You cannot do that, okay? So with a mouse, if you allow it to eat ad libitum, what this study did, it allowed them to eat however much they want on a ketogenic diet, yes, they'll get fat, duh, they're eating as much as they want. What's even funnier is that in one week of this ketogenic diet, these mice ate to obesity and got obese. It took them a week and they got obese. Okay, point is they overate a lot. Now let's jump over to what this study references as short-term and long-term, okay? Because this plays a big part too. In this case, one week was considered short-term. One week in the human world, that's barely enough to even get you into ketosis. Okay, and then three months was considered long-term. Uh, that's not exactly long-term, okay? Now, Frontiers in Endocrinology 2019, we have a human, human studies, okay, that show that after two years on the ketogenic diet, there is still dramatic improvements in the metabolism, showing that in human studies, if we're doing keto for two years, we're still getting better, we're getting healthier, we're decreasing the symptoms of metabolic syndrome. However, if we were to look at this short-term study as long-term, it would indicate that we're having all kinds of issues. Anyhow, point is, 
let's talk about what this study really was after, because this is the meat and potatoes of this. This study was pro-keto. This study was about how gamma delta T cells increase in the visceral fat when you do keto. Here's what's wild. Gamma delta T cells are a part of the immune system that reduce inflammation. They are good. We want an increase in them. So what they saw with this study is that mice, even when they gained weight in the first week, they got obese in the first week, even in that first week, they still had an improvement in gamma delta T cells that reduced inflammation. So despite getting really fat in the first week, they still got healthier. Whoa. But then three months down the line of getting fatter and fatter and fatter, then they saw the gamma delta T cells start to decrease and inflammation increase. Well, guess who comes to the rescue there? People love to read that and they say, huh, three months on a ketogenic diet and these mice, their inflammation went through the roof and their gamma delta T cell activity went down and their visceral fat went up. They're obese. Keto's going to hurt you. It's going to destroy you. Yeah, of course they're going to say that because these mice got so morbidly obese. At some point, you're going to get unhealthy. You could take someone eating the perfect macronutrient ratio. You could take someone eating the perfect crystal clear ketogenic diet to a T, but if they eat so much that they become 900 pounds, they're going to have inflammation. They're going to be sick. It does not matter because obesity is inflammatory. But what's wild is even just one week of being obese, actually the ketones were still able to supersede that and cause a positive response. So what's funny is that if you take mice in another scenario, like in a study that was published in the journal Cell, they found that the mice had an increase in lifespan by 13% on a ketogenic diet if they did not get obese. So when you take mice in other studies and you put them on a ketogenic diet, but you control how much they eat and don't let them get obese, guess what? It improves their health and it improves their metabolism. And guess what? They live longer. Who would have thought? So you see what the research world is all about? The research is good. It's the people that interpret it and like to push their agendas for whatever direction they want to go because they play on the ignorance that people aren't going to actually read a study. And I hate to break it to you, but 98% of the people aren't going to take the time to read a study because of two reasons. One, they're busy and they don't have time and they don't want to hear it. But two, a lot of times these studies, you have to pay to access them and not everyone has 50 bucks to go access a document, right? Point is, is you need to rely on information that is put out there by trusted sources that can decipher this. This study was pro-keto. It found that ketones improve anti-inflammatory systems within the visceral fat. End rant, please don't forget to hit that like and subscribe button. And as always, keep it locked in here for daily videos.